Welcome to CES 2014. There's no place like Pepcom. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit Specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. If you've been doing CES for a while, you know that there's a show before the show. It's Pepcom. Is it working? One of the things that has traditionally defined CES are big TVs. It's in the DNA, and guess what? This year is no different. I'm here at Pepcon for CES International 2014 with Samsung's U9000 series. This is their flagship, a 65-inch monitor with a curved screen, a 21 by 9 aspect ratio, and a 4K resolution. Now, this monster will be available starting in about quarter one as they release more and more of the screens. We don't know the pricing yet, but this is going to be the standard against which all other 4K displays are judged. Now, if you're looking for an Ultrabook, this is the hotness. This is the Acer S7, the Haswell edition. It's fast, it's light, it's powerful, it lasts forever. But of course, not everyone needs the hotness. Sometimes you just need the right device. In front of me, I've got Acer's new line of devices that are, well, they're designed to hit a low price point. Let's start with this. This is their new Chromebook. Chromebook C720. Now, like their previous Chromebook, it's adding a lot of features that you get from lower-end Chromebooks, like a long battery life, seven and a half hours. It's got an Atom processor. But this also adds a touchscreen. And with a price of $299, this might be the device that you give to that person who just needs simple browsing, who needs Google Apps, who needs mail, who needs something that's easy to use. Speaking of easy to use, we've got the B1 and the A1. The B1 is designed to be sort of the beginner's tablet. At 129, it's definitely not going to break the bank, and it's actually got decent performance. But I know that you're going to not want to go for this when you see this. This is the Acer A1. Again, this is a much higher power tablet. This is jelly bean smooth and will be upgraded to KitKat. The nice thing about this tablet is it's got a really good feel to it. It's, it's large enough to make me want to use it, but it's small enough that it's going to be mobile. And check this out, the pricing, $149. Acer, it's not just sexy, it's also affordable. Now the Mac Pro is the new hotness. It's the device you have to be if you're a serious content creator or a workstation B who needs the power. But we also know that there are limitations. Specifically, it uses Thunderbolt for all its external peripherals, and Thunderbolt can be a little limited. That is, of course, unless you're here at the Corning booth. Now Corning has combined their mastery of Thunderbolt with all of their experience with fiber. That's right, fiber optics, the same fiber that runs data across the internet, across the country, across the world, they're now using to enhance Thunderbolt. Now, how does it enhance Thunderbolt, will you ask? Well, of course, you know, fiber optics are less susceptible to interference. You're not going to have to worry about dropping speed because you're near a power outlet. But most importantly is distance. With a Thunderbolt Corning device, I can now get up to 60 meters from my devices and I can still daisy chain them. Now it's not just for Thunderbolt. Corning also has devices that will do USB 3 up to 30 meters, and um, you know I believe we're going to see this technology incorporated more and more because glass is the future. Uh, you know I don't like to brag, but you know fans write me and say, Dick, you find things that geeks like that techie people like, and I found another gadget that I think you're going to like. It's not Bluetooth, but I think you'll want it in your own home. Oh, actually, this is pretty neat. This is the Club Cadet, and this is, they're calling it the future of lawn care. It's an all-electric cutter. So as the company says, zero engine heat, totally quiet. So, you know, you like to mow the lawn at four in the morning, you can do it. And you know, I'll show you how effective this was, or is. When we came in earlier, this was shag carpeting six inches high. And Jeff, look at that. Look at that amazing job. There are a few things that make a sad doge quicker 
then no power, which is why we're here at Anchor. Now, I know power isn't that sexy, but I had to bring these out because of the price point and because of the capacity. This is Anchor's Pro series of devices. Now, this small black one is actually a 6,000 milliamp hour device. It has this little cool meter that when you shake, it tells you exactly how much is left in the battery. Now, the cool thing about this is this will actually charge all of your micro USB devices, even the high power ones, which means you can get a full power for your iPhone or your Android phone and even have a charge for your iPad. Now if you need more power than that or if you need to charge more devices, they've got this. This is the 20,000, the, it's a 20 milliamp hour, so 20, actually 20 amp hour, 20,000 milliamp hour battery. Now the cool thing about this is it actually has three high power USB ports and it's smart. Not only will that little meter tell you how much is left in the battery, but it will automatically switch between low and high power USB. You don't have to worry about inc any incompatibilities. Plus, all of the Pro Series devices will let you charge them while they charge other devices, meaning that this could be the hub of your power empire. Now, for those who don't need an external battery but maybe have a lot of devices, Anchor also has this. This is an 80-watt device that will charge, what is that, one, two, three, four, five different USB devices at the same time. Now these are all available right now for $26.99 for, for this and for the 6,000 milliamp hour battery and $79.99 for this Pro. If you need power, you're probably going to need Anchor. Now we love ourselves some sound, but I got to say after listening to dozens if not hundreds of different speakers and speaker systems throughout the last 18 months, well I got to say I'm a little jaded, I'm a little cynical, that was at least until now. This is a new system from Fugu, and just like the name sounds, it's a system. It's not a speaker. It's not a dustproof. It's not a snowproof. It's not a shockproof. It's not a waterproof speaker. It's all those things in one. Now, what makes the Fugu different, you might ask? Well, I brought up the CEO of the company who's going to show us a little bit about how this system works. The thing is designed around a common core, a, a battery-driven system that has Bluetooth 4.0 and gives you 40 hours of battery life. Now it's also a full duplex speakerphone, so you can use the internal speakers and batteries to give yourselves a really good sounding conference call. What I like about this is the flexibility of the system. You can add a shockproof case if you're going to be using it in the wild. You can add a fashionable case if you want to use it as a device for your end table. You can add different mounts so that you can put it on your bicycle, your car, a tree, a, a basketball pole. Basically anywhere you want to mount it, you can find a place to do it with the Fugu system. Now, I got a chance to play with this before CES, and I got to say, it is one of the best sounding speakers I've ever heard. Being so small, so compact and light is definitely a plus. Now, if you can give me all of those capabilities in one system, well, the future is Fugu. I'm growing sleepy. Oh, this is amazing. I, I can hardly keep my eyes open. All right, it has nothing to do with sleep, okay? This is really nifty. This is called iLock. And when I went by the booth, someone said, you know, this reads your eye. And I said, there are a lot of those out there. And then the young lady said, this reads both eyes. And Tony here is gonna tell us the percentages of being able to break into a code that has one eye is right. like one in one in 1.5 million one in one right and now a if false it, accept rate the wrong person being authenticated okay and if we, it reads both eyes right great question i lock authenticates two eyes simultaneously it's one in 2.25 trillion wow that's worse than the lot it's winning the lottery right. number 300 times the population of the planet wow <laughs> okay so uh, tell us a little bit more about iLock. It just goes into USB? Yeah, so I, this is called Myris. Okay. By iLock. This oh, is you, what do you have iLock up there and it's called Myris? So iLock is the name of the company. Okay. Product name is Myris. Myris, okay. Myris is a, a USB. Oh, Myris is like my iris? Come on, you're okay. good. Okay, you are okay, good. okay. So that's exactly right. And okay. it is very personal. And the reason why it's my iris, because your iris is different than anybody else in the world. Identical twins have different irises. It is the second most verifiable biometric. Only DNA is more accurate, okay? Oh, okay. So, okay. so it's a big drop off after iris. You have fingerprint, you have palm vein and, and, um, and voice and face, etc. But iris, again, is really the most commercially available. 
um, feasible biometric solution. Okay, we're not going to use a, a cheek swab to log into our computer. Okay, right? so okay, so we're going to capture real-time video, okay. roughly 20 frames per second. We're going to immediately convert that into a 2,000-bit stream. We're finding all of those 240 points in each eye to create your 2,000-bit stream. We're going to encrypt it. Then we're going to uh, scramble that encryption. And now that's your template. That is stored on your Myris product. Okay. Now, I've already enrolled, and I have access privileges to this computer. So I'm literally just going to look at the camera. It authenticated me. It's going to turn green, and it has just unlocked my computer, okay. only uh, using my iris. Okay. Put it back into mode. And watch me be the one in two billion people. Is it set to go? It's all set. Okay. Look into my eyes. Look into my eyes. My name is Anthony. My name is Anthony. I got a blue. That doesn't right. help, right? That means you're alive and the camera has recognized <laughs> that. Congratulations. Okay. It's a step up. I'm alive. Okay. Unless you've been living in a cave, you've probably heard about this stuff. This is Gorilla Glass, also known as Deep Ion Exchange Glass. The idea is you use a process to push the lattice further down into the surface to keep it from being as breakable as scratchable. Now, how much resistance does it give you, you may ask? We've got a little demonstration here that's going to show you exactly how much regular glass scratches and then how resistant Gorilla Glass is. So if you could please show us. 1.6 millimeter soda lime glass here. And we're going to show, go to a 0.8 millimeters, so that's 50% less competitor glass. And then we're going to end with 0.4 millimeters Gorilla Glass. So that's 25% of the thickness of soda lime and 50% of the thickness of the competitor glass. This is a standard glass cutting tool. Okay, it's a score wheel. And we're going to apply a force on the glass. And you can see how the glass scratches in here. So we're going to apply about 1,500 grams. And you can see the scratch in the soda lime glass. We'll go to the alternative aluminosilicate glass here, the competitor glass, apply about the same force. And this is about the force that you use to clean the glass. You can see the scratch on that glass. And we'll now apply the same force to Corning Gorilla Glass 3. and you can't see a scratch on the glass. Significantly thinner due to the native damage resistance and you still can't see a scratch on the glass. Now Gorilla Glass isn't all just about scratch resistance. Here at the International CES 2014, they've announced a brand new genre of product and that is silver ion exchange. So they've basically taken the same process and Corning has given a finite control of the amount of silver ions that are embedded in the glass. Now this is not your standard microbial, antimicrobial product because what it is is it's the silver is actually inside the glass. It's not a coating, it's not an emulsion, it's not a power, which means it will never wear out, it will never fall off, and it will never scratch away. This is really the future of mobile devices. I'm here with the CEO of IOSafe, Rob Moore. Now, Rob, I have seen your CES demo each and every single year, and every year it gets more outrageous. I think the first year we burned it, the second year we crushed it, the third year we shot it, and the fourth year we electrocuted it. But now, I think you're mature, right? We are. We're starting to go up the market uh, towards more business and enterprise applications, and we're here at Pepcom to announce a new product, the IOSA 1513. I don't know, it'll be kind of weird for me to see you actually on the show floor displaying the product rather than destroying it. Now, we took a look at the N2 not too long ago, and uh, so many geeks, Patrick Norton, myself, Alan Malventano, all said the same thing, which is it was the fastest two-bay NAS we've ever played with. It was a Synology heart inside of IOSafe guts, inside of your, your tank-like shell. You've got something new. What is this? This is the, our brand new product, the IOSafe 1513. It's a five-bay, fireproof, waterproof, uh, disaster-proof NAS, basically. It can run uh, on enterprise applications, prosumer, videographers, photographers would use this to store up to 90 terabytes of fireproof, waterproof storage. It's also based on the Synology platform, just like the N2 and the 214. It's just like uh, the 214 Big Brother. What I like about that is you've, you've taken what people like about Synology, which is the speed and the stability, and then you literally have shoehorned it into something that I personally know can survive being crushed, blown up, burned, shot, and electrified. Right. And you would know. You've seen all our demos, and so, yeah. 
proved it. Now, I, okay, one quick question from the fans, because I get this all the time. They always get a little bit of sticker shock because they go, oh, whoa, that's, that's expensive. And we always try to tell them, look, you're not really buying a drive. You're buying an insurance policy. You're getting the drive for free. What would you say to someone who is on the fence about whether or not to spend that little extra money and get an armored storage unit? I would say think about your house. Think about your 10, 20 terabytes of data in your house, burnt down to the ground, and go, does it make sense to pay an extra $400, $500 on a fireproof storage device? Maybe. I don't know. What your pictures are worth, what your video is worth, what your business is worth. I mean, to me it does. Have you ever wanted call screening, but in real life? Well, now you can with DoorBot. This cool little gadget is, well, it is call screening for your door. The way it works is that someone walks up and pushes the button. It will actually push out a notification to all the devices that you've configured to do so. Your phones, your tablets, Android, iOS, whatever it might be. You then see who's at the door, and you get the option to either initiate a two-way conversation or reject the ring. Now, the cool thing about this is it will last for up to a year or more on a single charge. It's got an internal lithium-ion battery, and you can hardwire it in for those permanent installations. It sells for $199 right now, and it might be just the thing if you want to get a bit more peace of mind when someone rings your bell. If you're a frequent traveler, you probably know about GoGo in flight. It's a Wi-Fi system that lets you connect when you're at 30,000 feet and above. Now, the cool thing about GoGo -Go has always been that I could connect my laptop, my mobile device, and, and get you know, communication when I need to, when I'm up in the air. But they've got a brand new service that they announced at the show that may make waves in the industry. You see, they're now going to allow you to use an app that you get from GoGo, -Go, connect through their Wi-Fi system at a reduced price, and send text messages. That's right. With the app, it'll look like it's coming from your phone. All your text messages will arrive on your phone like all your other text messages, but you'll be able to stay connected without having to pay a large rate, without having to go through a, a graphics laden browser, and most importantly, without ever having to be disconnected. Not too long ago, we had a transporter on Before You Buy. It's a very interesting device that gives you your own private cloud. I'm here with Jim Sherhart from Transporter, who's going to tell us all about their new sync and some of the maturity that they've added to their devices. Tell me about it. Yeah, sure. So uh, Transporter, as you know, had an internal drive, and a lot of people like that option. But what we've come out with is we've come out with a Transporter sync that allows you to use any external USB drive you have laying around. Great for people that have a stack of drives laying around, or great for people that maybe want more than two terabytes of storage. So the sync product starts at 99 bucks, great price point too. So some of the new stuff that we've added in, so one of the things we heard from people is they didn't want to have to put everything into a folder like Dropbox. So we've actually created this thing called Special Folders that will allow you to sync your desktop, your documents, your photos, your movies, or your music folder. So you can just keep stuff where it's at, and now magically it starts syncing. Now I'm going to put you on the spot because one of the things that our listeners have asked for is to stop the siloization of data. Yes, the transporter's cool. Yes, there's NASs that are cool. But they want to see these devices start working with each other and with services. For example, would you ever consider adding a Dropbox, Dropbox app to the transporter so that people could synchronize their files locally but also up in the cloud? Yeah, for sure. So, so we have APIs for every platform. And one of the things we'd love to do is be able to sync this, for example, with Dropbox. Because we don't think necessarily that Transporter's, you know, 100% the solution for everybody. And a lot of people use Dropbox, and it makes a lot of sense to sync with Dropbox. So absolutely, that's something we're in discussions with, and that's something we're looking at for down the road. Thanks for talking to us. Thanks for playing, uh, letting us play with your tech. I'm sure that we're going to take a look at this one before you buy. But until then... Now, not too long ago, we were promised something like this. A universal scanner that would give you all your vitals, that could tell you exactly what was going on with your body. Well, we haven't been delivered that, but we do have this. This is the Scanadu Scout. Now, the idea behind this is you just click the device and hold it to your temple, and in just a few seconds, it will send all your vital statistics, your temperature, your heartbeat, galvanic skin response, basically any bit of information you can get from a device like this will end up on your phone and end up letting you make better decisions about your health. Now, they, they're getting FDA approval right now, but expect to find the Scanadu Scout for about $199, and then you can beam me up. Now, if you're just using the router that came with your ISP or a cheapie that you've picked up at the local Best Buys, you're probably not going to get all the services out of it that you need, especially if you're trying to protect children or other people in your household from, let's just say, the darker side of the internet. 
That's why we've got Skydog. We're here looking at their new product, 149, which will allow you to do essentially deep packet inspection of all the traffic that's going through your network. You want to take a look at how much bandwidth people are using, you can do that. If you want to look at what individual users are doing, you can set policies to make sure that people aren't going to websites that they're not supposed to be at, and they're not using services that they're not supposed to use. The nice thing about this is that Skydog has an enterprise class heritage. They're from Xerox Park. They cut their bones making enterprise solutions, and now they're taking that and giving it you a package that's, well, for the consumer for the parent, for the person who's concerned about what their loved ones are watching on the internet. If you want a bit more control over the traffic flooding into your house, take a look at Skydog. So maybe you want to ride. Maybe you want to ride, but you don't want to have to worry about falling over every time you tip your bike up. That's why we're here with Erica Squirtlow from Can-Am, who's going to tell us a little bit about this bad boy, the spider. Erica, I understand that you've been working on this for what? Four, seven years since 2007? Yes, that's right. We introduced it in 2007. This is BRP's version of an open air riding experience. Like you said, you feel confident, you have control, you have stability, and a lot of fun. And this version you're sitting on is the STS model, which is the sport touring. There's a sportier version and even a bigger touring model that you and I could take out on the road. Now, a few of the things that I really liked about this, I love the Y construction, yep. I love the independent suspension, it feels really nice, it feels really gentle, it feels like it's not going to get away from me, and yet, you are going to get that riding experience. You do, you, get a, you can get a lot of speed if that's how you like to ride, um, and it is the Y frame that makes it feel so stable. Now the tech behind it is actually really good. I, I like the, the use of uh, composite materials on some of the chassis. I like the Rotax engine. Uh, tell me, who is this really for? I mean, what's the audience for one of these spiders? Because I, I understand that the, the purist, the, the, the chopper freak out there is going to want something that's a bit more traditional. This feels nice, but who do you think is going to want to bring one of these bad boys out in the open? So there's a few audiences. One is the people who have been bikers, and as they age a bit, they feel a little nervous on two wheels, but they still want to continue an open air experience. There's also a younger set. There's women who are nervous about tipping a bike and not able, and, and men too, who can't pick the bike up if something happened. That doesn't happen on this. And then there's a lot of couples that enjoy the time they're together in comfort. It's not loud, it's smooth ride. So there's been people who are bikers, but they can't always get their spouse on the back of the bike. It's really running all age groups. And then there's people who just appreciate the coolness, the hotness of the way it looks. And this year we've introduced a lot of new colors. So it's about the bling as well. Well, as someone who just recently had to lay down a V-twin, uh, maybe this might be my next before you buy. I feel something happening. I feel, I feel growth. I do, I feel growth. I'm Father Robert Ballas here saying goodbye from CES 2014 at Pepcon. Be around Rosie a puck of the spears. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little twitties too. Ah!